Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. We've had some of the most advanced health and wellness experts in the world on the show. And we've invited somebody today who is renowned. Dr. Donald Jolly is known for his work with hyperbaric chambers. He is known for being at the Center for New Medicine, Hyperbaric Institute in Irvine, California, And he is an expert in hyperbaric oxygen treatments and answers and protocols for people that are experiencing many conditions of unwellness, from diabetes to brain injuries to sports injuries to even people being treated with chemo and radiation with cancer. They're doing brand new things. And he's also trained under some of the experts in the field in the hyperbaric area. He trained under David Hughes at the Hyperbaric Institute in London and Scotland, and was mentored by one of the top hyperbaric experts in the world, Richard Neubauer, who was the founder of the Ocean Hyperbaric Institute in Fort Lauderdale. This is a man that people go to when they want to be well using the latest, most advanced form of treatment. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my divine pleasure to welcome Dr. Donald Jolly to its rainmaking time. Good morning. Greetings and good morning to you, to all of you. I think the first thing that I have learned reading about you is how this higher pressure, this hyperbaric pressure works on the body, but I'd like you to explain it to those of us who've never heard of it before, even though you've been doing this for years. Well, it goes back to the Coca-Cola principle. If you were to visit the uh, office or the bottling company of Coca-Cola, you would see them mixing a lot of sugar and caramel and caffeine and whatever together, but the very last thing they do with that mixture is they expose it to pressure in the presence of a gas. The pressure causes the gas to dissolve into the liquid. And in a hyperbaric chamber, the same thing happens. The pressure causes the gas, which is 100% pure oxygen, to dissolve into the liquid, which happens to be your bodily fluids, your blood and all the other bodily fluids, so that the oxygen is then dissolved at extremely high levels into those fluids, which then seep into the cells and promote incredible healing. Oxygen is the most important element that our body uses. Some say, yeah, sure, food we need or we die. Well, I agree with that. We do, but it takes us weeks to die without it. And others will say, well, water, if we don't have water, we'll die. That's absolutely true. You'll die, but it'll take many days for you to die of dehydration. My question always is, how long will it take you to die without oxygen? The answer is probably three to five minutes, maybe six. It depends on how oxygenated you are when you stop breathing. So that's what happens when uh, oxygen is infused into the body. The cells are so incredibly saturated with oxygen that they promote healing. Oxygen does two things. It sustains life, which we already discussed, and it promotes healing healing that wouldn't otherwise be promoted. That's why the FDA has declared oxygen a drug. When oxygen is used in its 100% form, and especially under hyperbaric conditions because it's dosed magnificently in terms of the volume that's dissolved into the body, it is considered a drug and it is under the control of physicians to have to issue a prescription in order to uh, use hyperbaric oxygen. This process induces angiogenesis, which is the growing of new blood vessels. How does it do that, and how do we know that for sure? Well, (laughs) how it does it, it does it using a combination of the pressurization and the change in pressure and the oxygenation. The body knows and feels and perceives, obviously, that When you go under pressure, your blood vessels are constricted a little bit. And when you threaten the body, the immune system says, my body's being threatened, I don't like my blood vessels being constricted, so I'm going to act in a contrary form. So what happens is when you get out of the chamber, your body is saying, man, they try to constrict my blood vessels, I'm going to overcome that. So the body starts to generate tiny new blood vessels and actually uh, help the existing ones to grow and heal and repair whatever needs to be repaired. And the more treatments you have, the more that happens. How can we prove that it happens? 
the best way for me is to use a brain spec scan. A brain spec scan is a very sophisticated nuclear scan of the brain, which determines levels of, and places of profusion of blood flow. So we can do a before, and we can tell where blood flow may be compromised. We can do some treatments and afterwards do another brain scan and tell where the perfusion has increased because of the growth of new blood vessels, and that's a provable thing, which is very exciting. It takes it away from the realm of opinion. Now, you've worked with people that had brain injuries, strokes, diabetes, autism, and cancer. Can you say something, for example, Gabriel Giffords could probably benefit from this, or is it too late for her to benefit from this process? My personal opinion is that it's uh, very, very rarely too late. Very rarely. Um, I'm part of a group that's working on a research project with soldiers that have been injured in uh, in blast injuries uh, due to uh, any form of explosion. It doesn't mean they got blown up. It doesn't even mean that they were at the absolute site of the explosion. But whenever there's an explosion, there's an expansion of energy from the site of the explosion, and sometimes it moves very quickly, and it throws people around hundreds of feet away from the incident. And those people can hit their head and, and have head injury. More often than not, they don't hit their head, but the extreme movement causes the brain, which is encapsulated in the skull, to hit the bone and to damage some of the blood vessels that are crisscrossing the brain, which then impedes blood flow to certain neurons, and you have brain injury. We have, you have trackable brain injury. Those kinds of things can be assisted remarkably by hyperbaric oxygen therapy simply because the angiogenesis process will help overcome that, and the sooner the better. Um, I've seen a 14-year stroke victim have enough improvement to leave the convalescent hospital and go home and be taken care of by his wife. The main problem was he he couldn't pivot. He couldn't do anything for himself. Uh, he had to be lifted from the toilet to the wheelchair to the bed. And he was able, <clears throat> he had a bunch of treatments, I think probably close to 40. And along with the right physical therapy, because the uh, hyperbaric is going to deal with the brain, and then uh, if you want to challenge what the newly healed brain can do, you have to challenge it. And that means you have to work. You have to do some therapy. You have to do some exercise. You have to do things that are going to utilize the increased capability of, of signaling, the electronic signals that go from the brain to various parts of the body, and that's therapy. So my, my thing is uh, 50% hyperbarics, 50% hard work and dedication. And this man was able to uh, go home, and his wife was able to take care of him and be with him without having to have him in a center. Dr. Jolly, so many of the things that are available to help the body are very expensive. What does hyperbaric treatment cost, and is it something that insurance companies will pick up? And what about people who do not have insurance but want the treatments? How does it work? Well, here here's a couple of things that have to do with cost. Uh, the last time I uh, checked with a major medical center, and I'm talking major, major medical center, well-known worldwide in uh, Southern California, they billed $2,000 per treatment for hyperbaric therapy, $2,000 per treatment. And the uh, patient uh, was responsible either through secondary insurance or or personally, for 20% of the billed amount. So that means the patient was responsible for $400 of treatment, and the insurance company paid whatever they paid on a $2,000 bill for one treatment. And many times you need 20, 30, 40 treatments, depending upon the problem. Now, we, for example, I'll just pull us, because I know what our charges are, are $215 a treatment and $195 a treatment for five or more treatments. So that's a whole lot cheaper than $2,000 a treatment. Right. And the reason that hyperbarics is so expensive in hospitals is because hospitals are very expensive to run and the costs uh, are amortized out through all the departments to make up. 